Hollywood tends to ruin anime whenever they try to adapt it. In America, they don't understand what made the anime good, like with Death Note. While in Japan, they don't understand what works in anime and what doesn't in live action, like with FMA. I believe that I have a firm grasp on how to make a good Hollywood anime film that would please both fans and newcomers. In this video, I will share my idea of a live action Naruto made in Hollywood. The first important detail is the world of Naruto. The first major changes I'll make is the technology. Instead of the village lifestyle, I would make the world more modernized with technology such as phones and guns. The world will still be split into countries like in the original, but the land of fire will be a modernized country and Konoha will be its capital. Each country has a capital where they breed ninjas. In this version, ninja will be assassins with superhuman capabilities when compared to criminals armed with guns. Each capital has an academy for training young ninja into becoming genin. The students learn basic ninja techniques like camouflage, clone jutsu, and etc. Ninja in this world are hired to carry out tasks for their country. These tasks are often fighting enemy ninja or stopping dangerous organizations. The Hokage will be like the president of the capital. The ninja costumes and combat will have some significant changes. In this version, a ninja's primary form of combat is acrobatic hand-to-hand -hand combat and or combat with a tanso, a weapon almost all ninja will have. Hand seals and jutsus are also a must. The hand seals for each jutsu will be clearly visible and accurate to the manga. Shurikens will also stay, but kunai won't be that important. The characters also won't shout out the name of their attacks. The ninja costumes will be tight one-piece outfits, similar to Marvel superhero costumes. Each ninja will have their own unique colors and design that include their clan symbol and pouches for weapons. The headbands will also stay. Instead of characters jumping on trees, they will run and jump on rooftops, buildings, and walls in a parkour style. My reason for modernizing the world is that I believe that it would be a beneficial choice for a live action movie. The change to the combat and costumes is because I think using Marvel movies as a reference point is a necessary decision. Both Marvel series and anime come from comics that usually have superpowers. The Marvel movies handle the transfer of powers and costumes from comic to movie so naturally. The suits from the comics would look stupid in live action, and the same goes for manga and anime. Marvel's decisions to have hand or weapon combat as a primary form of combat would also work better for live action instead of complex magic flying around. And Naruto itself does have hand-to-hand -hand combat. So to make the fights more ninja-esque, I added the Tanso to replace the kunai as a melee weapon. Finally, the shouting of attack names only works in anime. Next is the characters. While I am a fan of the Japanese names, I don't think they will go well with the newcomers who don't know Japanese or anime. So I will keep the first names the same and change the last names to something simple. The primary character names will be Naruto Spiral, Sasuke Windmill, Sakura Springfield, and Kakashi Land. Naruto will be similar to his manga counterpart. He will still be ambitious and loud, but less annoying. His catchphrase of believe it will stay, but it won't be overused and annoying. Naruto's backstory will be exactly the same. Sasuke will stay almost perfectly the same, but his emo will be toned down. For Sakura, her love for Sasuke will be more subtle and the same goes for Naruto's love for Sakura. Kakashi won't change at all. The character backstories will stay mostly the same, but Naruto's and Sasuke's are the only ones important, for now. For the specific character designs, Naruto will keep his spiky yellow hair, but it wouldn't look like a cosplay, it will look natural. He will wear an orange suit with blue accents and his clan symbol on the back in a ninja headband. Sasuke's hair will be black and gelled up towards the back, but will still look somewhat realistic. His suit will be black and blue with his clan symbol on the back. He will also have an arm warmers and bandages. He will also wear his headband on his forehead, like Naruto. Sakura will have long brown hair, but with pink tints on the edges. She will wear her headband in her hair like she does in the anime, and she will wear a pink and red jumpsuit with her clan symbol on the back. Kakashi will have white spiky hair, but a realistic amount and volume. His headband will be worn exactly the same way, 
and his suit will be green and navy blue with a capital symbol on the back. Zabuza will look mostly the same, but his black suit will be more detailed. Haku will be clearly a boy, but with his long hair. His mask and hairstyle will remain the same, but his outfit will be a black suit with blue and green robes on top. The changes to the power system will be in the names. Ninjutsu will be called Ninja Power, Genjutsu will be called Ninja Illusion, and Taijutsu will be called Ninja Combat, just to make things easier for newcomers. Other than that, everything is the same. Naruto will have Shadow Clones, Sasuke will have Fireballs, Kukashi will have Sharingan, Raikiri, and his other Jutsu, but Sakura will have some kind of ninja illusion. Now on to the story. The movie begins with the exposition of ninja and the way they work in the Naruto world. The demon fox in Naruto is also explained here. Following this, Naruto's loneliness is explored. And then a montage of young Naruto is shown. The main things are Naruto saying that he will become Hokage, attending the academy, failing, and training hard. At the end of the montage, Naruto is older and shown passing the Shadow Clone exam with many clones. Iruka is shown giving Naruto tough love and being the one to pass him. Naruto is then called to the Hokage's building and is told that he will be put into a three-man squad. When he is shown to the waiting room, he meets Sasuke and Sakura there. The three of them are already familiar with one another and bounce off each other like in their manga counterparts before Kakashi shows up and falls for Naruto's prank. Scenes of Zabuza and Gato joining forces are then shown. Kakashi asks for the three characters' likes, dislikes, and goals. This scene carries out like in the manga. Kakashi tells them to meet up in a park tomorrow for their first assignment, and the first act concludes. The next day, Kakashi shows up late. He makes the trio take the belt test with the same rules. For the battle, I'll just lay down the important points. The three all use their signature jutsu at one point. Sasuke is shown to be better than Naruto at everything and better than Sakura at offense. Naruto's never give up mentality is displayed. Sakura's love for Sasuke is also displayed. The trio don't use teamwork. Kakashi reads his novel and toys with the three while teaching them lessons. There are cool CQC scenes with a lot of acrobatics and ninja weapons. There are also cool jutsu used. Kakashi destroys the three in the end. Kakashi's failing lesson and then passing remain mostly the same but ends with Kakashi naming the team Team 7. The next day, Kakashi gets a mission from the Hokage and calls up his team. The team gets Tazuna and they go to Kiri. Tazuna explains his story to them on the way there. On their way out of Konoha, they are met with enemy ninja. Naruto and Sakura are unable to do anything. Kakashi seemingly dies, Sasuke takes action, and then Kakashi comes back and saves the day. At the end of the battle, Sasuke insults Naruto and the latter shows his resolve. Scenes of Zabuza fighting and defeating other ninja are shown. Team 7 arrives at Kiri and then begins to explore as the differences between the countries are shown. During this time, they witness Haku taking down some enemy ninja and they talk to him later. They have a conversation with him and learn more about him, even befriending him. Haku also gives his backstory here but doesn't mention Zabuza. Team 7 and Tazuna also meet Inari in Kiri and learn about his story. They have a short training where they try to run up a tree and it plays out like in the manga. When the group is trying to go to the bridge building site, they are attacked by Zabuza. Kakashi and Zabuza fight and are evenly matched, but then Kakashi uses his Sharingan and gains the upper hand, surprising Sasuke. When Kakashi is about to win, Haku shows up, to the team's pleasure, but he suddenly attacks Kakashi. Not sure if he can hold off the two, Kakashi asks the students to run away. Naruto and Sasuke try to join in the battle, but when they see Kakashi killed, they run away with Tasuna. Zabuza and Haku chase them, and they are forced to split up. Team 7 and Tasuna are barely able to survive, concluding Act 2. Inari gathers his people and forms a group to fight Zabuza. Team 7 meet up again and Naruto and Sasuke mourn the death of Kakashi. Naruto and Sasuke get into a fight before Tazuna splits them up and gives them a motivational speech. Inari and his group show up at the bridge site and are ready to fight, but Sabuza captures Inari in his water prison as a hostage. When Inari is about to drown, Team 7 shows up. Sakura captures Haku in an illusion as Naruto and Sasuke use their Shadow Shuriken combo and free Inari. The three come back to support Sakura as her Genjutsu begins to wear off. Zabuza engages in combat with Naruto and Sasuke, 
but the two are able to work well together. When Zabuza uses a high ranked jutsu, Kakashi shows up and counters it, revealing that he substituted before his death. Kakashi and Sakura take on Zabuza while Naruto and Sasuke take on Haku. Sasuke and Haku fight in close range before Haku traps the former in crystal ice bearers. Naruto foolishly runs in and gets scolded by Sasuke. The fight plays out the same as in the manga, except Haku explains his relationship to Zabuza here. Kakashi vs Zabuza also stays the same, but with the added support of Sakura. Sasuke awakens Sharingan, Naruto uses QB mode, Kakashi summons his dogs, and Haku takes a Chidori for Zabuza. Gato's crew shows up and the rest plays out the same, with Haku, Zabuza, and Gato dying in the end. After everything settles, Tazuna builds the bridge and Team 7 returns to Konoha. Naruto and Sasuke become a little friendlier and Sakura accepts Naruto more. Team 7 is shown hanging out and the movie ends with Kakashi asking the students if they know what the shooting exams are. Thank you for watching, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe.